Lord, that they may experience your grace, O Lord Jesus Christ. Even as we partake of the grace of my Father, is made sufficient to be a man of God, O King of Kings. We believe that our hearts may be renewed, O King of Glory, and the strength to continue in your spirit, to continue in your kingdom, to continue to commune with you. And let your spirit guide us. Let your spirit be the one to lead us. Let your spirit, my Father, teach us, guide us, and show us in the best way possible, Lord King of Kings. Let us not go aside from any of the rules of Lord. Let us not go aside, oh my Father, from the directives and your direction. And Lord God of glory, let your glories be seen. Let our images diminish and your glory, my Father, shine. Let you be seen in us, even as we become the pillars of the ministry, as we become the keys of the ministry, even as we have the keys of the kingdom, even as you give us the strength of my Father to open and to shut King of glory, you shall continue, my Lord, to commune with your spirit to enable us to go even to greater heights, to scale this ministry to greater heights, oh my Father, that we know that we have strength and the power, my Lord, King of Kings, and the ability to do it, King of Glory, strengthened by the Spirit, my Lord, we shall do exploits in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you and we bless your name. Adonai, Lord, of glory, be glorified and be honored in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. We will carry on with our first prayer, which is the first prayer. Our prayer guide is from the book of John, chapter 1, verse 16. And it says, Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. So in that manner, we will pray. Lord, we thank you for your fullness. You have made us partakers of grace. Teach us to observe your passage, to receive grace after grace. Together, we will pray. Lord, we thank you for your fullness. You have made us partakers of grace. Teach us to observe your precepts to receive grace after grace. Father, in your name, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. Thank you, Jehovah, for your mercies and graces that are sufficient to us, Lord. Thank you for enabling us to be partakers of your grace, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for enabling us to be as a team and to conquer these in your will, my King and my glory. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. Thank you, Jehovah, Lord, for you have guided us and you've enabled us to work together and to become a system in your unit, my king. We thank you, we give you glory, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your mercy and your love and abundant grace, Lord, and abundant mercy, my king and my God. We give you glory this evening as we pray in your name. Amen. So we take on prayer two. Take on prayer two from, from Romans. 5 verse 21, Romans 5 verse 21, as you all read, so that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through the righteousness to bring eternal life through Christ Jesus, or Jesus Christ our Lord, so that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And this is how we're going to pray as we have a moment of prayer. Let's not forget it's a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that through your grace we will, we will be partakers of, the, of your kingdom for all eternity. Heavenly Father, we pray that through your, king, your grace we will be partakers of your kingdom for all eternity. Let us proceed in that understanding. King of kings and the Lord of lords, Adonai and the God of glory, we praise you and we worship your name, O King of kings. Receive all the honor and adoration, O King of glory. We are made partakers, O my Father, and we pray that this moment in time, Lord, through your grace, O my Lord, let us be made partakers of your kingdom, O King of glory, for all eternity, Jehovah. For Jesus Christ, let your, let your strength, O my Father, give us wisdom. Let, us, let your grace, O my Father, give us wisdom and understanding, my Father, even as this moment in time for our youth, O Lord Jesus Christ. Let us be made partakers of your kingdom, Lord. Let us be strengthened, O my Father, to do exploits, O my Father, in your kingdom. Let us be strengthened, O my Father, to do greater works in your kingdom, Jehovah. Let your grace, O my Father, also give us the wisdom, understanding, and the knowledge, O my Father, in different aspects, in different areas, O my Father. Even make us, O Lord, to, to be wealthy, my Father, to promote your kingdom, O King of glory, even in times of our youth, O Jehovah, because it's not early, my Lord, to gain wealth. It's not too early, my Father, to do great exploits. It's not too early, my Lord, to have the gift of healing, the gift of praise, the gift of wisdom, and all the manner, my Father, of the Holy Spirit gift, gift that he gives, oh my Lord Jesus Christ. We honor and we glorify your name. Praises and praises be given unto you. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. Reading from the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 13. We're going to make a prayer of expectation. Luke chapter 11, verse 13, the Bible says, 
if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask them? Ask him. Dele. So we're going to make a prayer and say, Almighty Father, we pray that may you send the Holy Spirit to each and every one of us to awaken our hearts as we hear your word. Hallelujah. Almighty Father, we pray that may you send the Holy Spirit to each and every one of us to awaken our hearts as we hear your word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name. We say thank you for yet another privilege to appear before your presence, to hear your word, that as you teach us today, King of Glory, we remain expectant. We remain ever expectant of you. We ask that you may send the Holy Spirit to minister to every person listening to this session today, Lord. For them that shall listen to it at a different time, Father, may your spirit impact them. We pray, King of Glory, that as your word is being taught today, May your spirit open our spiritual ears. May you give us understanding. May you open our spiritual eyes, open our spiritual eyes that we may be able to comprehend, that you may be able to see the solutions that we have that we may be asking from you today, O Lord. We pray this, believing and trusting. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to take this privilege to welcome Daddy to minister to us. Marianne, please. Praise God. Uh, as we as we as we prepare to to listen to God's word, I'll be reading from the book of First Samuel, chapter seventeen, verse thirty-seven to thirty-nine. First Samuel, chapter seventeen, verse thirty-seven to thirty-nine. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his, um, with his armor and put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David guarded his sword upon his armor. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with this, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. I read the, I will reread verse 39. And David guarded his sword upon his armor, and he has said to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with this, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. Now, many of time, many a times we are we are prepared for war. I mean, uh, our spiritual life is more of a war, you know, you fight, it's, a, it's more of a spiritual warfare, you're always fighting. You will be prepared, we will, uh, God will give you the grace, but at times you have to, to have some self-examination. You know, David was armored with Saul's uh, gear, but he felt like, I am not ready for this, this is not what I am prepared for, I I. If I go wearing this, I am going to lose because this is not who I am. This is not who the Lord had intended me to be. This is not how I'm. I was, the Lord had intended for me to go fight this battle. The Lord intends me to fight it in another way. So I will go into the battlefield, not as David, but as Saul. But that is not who the Lord had intended me to go. The Lord intends for me to go as David. So now he, he had to put off all the all the stuff that Saul had had him armored in and he, he just took a sling and everyone knows that story about David and Goliath. So it's about time as the youth, we, we, we identify who we really are. We, we have to identify ourselves. We have to identify, I am not Saul. I am not who they want me to be. I am who the Lord has in, intended me to be. I am who the Lord has intended me to be. I am not who the other person thinks I should be. If this is what it means, if it means I have to shed these friends off, if it means I have to shed these behaviors, then I'll do that. If that is what it takes for 
me to go fight this war. If that is what it takes me to fight this war, I am ready to, you know, to to share the fall of this. I am not. This is not who I am. You know. So as we go, as we get ready to hear the word of God, as we, as the servant of God in the house today, talk, tell, uh, shares the word of God with us. Let us identify ourselves. Let us identify who we are. Be expectant. Be sensitive. You know, have an expectation. Uh, he, the, the, the Lord has something for you, has something for each and every person in this place. Be expectant, be sensitive. You know, if there's that thing that you feel like is stopping you from taking in the word, from taking in your part, your word that has been set forth for you, pray, pray that the Lord will help you to shed off that. Pray that the Lord will help you identify, Lord, this is not who I am. This is who I am. This is who you have intended me to be. You know, this is who the Lord has intended me to be. This is what you want for me. Pray that the Lord is going to guide you to show you what is expected of you, what he expects of you, what he wants from you, you know. So let us put off those things that are stopping us from serving the Lord. Let us pray that the Lord is going to help us to know what is it that is stopping me. Let us pray for guidance from the Lord. Let us pray that the Lord is, that God is giving us the grace to know that this is not who we are. This is not what we are supposed to be doing. This is not what we are supposed to be in, uh, be engaging in. This is not what we are supposed to be doing. This, the Lord is going to show us that he has intended this for us and this is the word that he has for us. So open your mouth, pray for spiritual guidance, pray for that the Lord is going to help you, that the Lord is going to show you this is what he expects of you. We are praying that the Lord is going to enable you to get your word. You're getting your word in season today. Every person that came into this place is getting their word in season today. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We lift your name high. Receive all the praise. Receive all the adoration. We're thanking you, dear Lord, for every single attendee of this service, Lord. We're praying that you're helping us. You're opening our spiritual eyes, Lord. As we get forth to hear your word, we're praying that you're getting understanding, Lord. You're getting understanding of your word. We're praying that every person is getting their word today, Lord. Thank you for your helping us. You're opening our eyes. You're helping us to understand you or to listen, dear Lord. And not just hear, not to be just hear us the word of the word, dear Lord, but do us of your word, Lord. Help us, Lord. Teach us to walk in your ways. Teach us your ways, Lord. Teach us your precepts, Lord, and help us to walk in them, Lord. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I take this opportunity to welcome Daddy Abraham to share what the Lord has put in his, in his mouth, in his spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. God bless you. Amen. That was well done, Job. Good preparation. May we know who we are, that we may end up not wearing a breastplate that we don't need, a helmet that we don't need, carry a shield that is so heavy for us. That was powerful. Hallelujah. That was powerful. Anyway, what should I do when a woman of God like that has spoken like that? So we can just close the service and go home with that word. She has spoken like 10 oracles in one location. Amen. The Lord is faithful. The Lord is good. Amen. Now, Jesus, we say thank you. Can you lift up your voice? Appreciate him, the King of all kings, as usual. We must give God thanks for everything. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you praise. Celebrate the King of all kings. He's a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, heaven and earth are doing. Open your mouth to celebrate the mighty God. Mashiki de Bokosoko. Lo bere gelaka tasaka tasapa. Celebrate the King of all kings. He's so mighty. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Lord Jesus, we appreciate you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
Amen and amen. Hallelujah. If you are a youth in the house, turn on your microphone and shout to Alilda. Hallelujah. 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 No, the way you shouted, you shouted like people who are progressing. Can you shout a live vibrant hallelujah? Hallelujah. Now back on, Stella knows what I mean. You shout a louder hallelujah, you vibrate your own bodies. Can you shout a louder hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to be young. It's good to be young. Knowing the Lord when you are young is better for you. It gives you an advantage. It gives you what? An advantage in life. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, our anchor scripture, as always. I think this scripture, everyone should memorize it. Next time I'll say Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, I love you should say it without checking your Bibles. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Hallelujah. I enjoyed the TikTok, which was very interesting. We know what we are as youths in the church. You're the guys who will come and take over. If your foundation is weak, the church will be weak. Hallelujah. I love what Arnold said. He was invited by a youth. He invited a youth. And he wants to invite more youths. Hallelujah. If he says that, what are you waiting for? Ask your neighbor next to you or SMS your neighbor say, what are you waiting for? How many will you invite? Hi, holy man. Hey, man. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Remember now the creator in the days of the youth. Remember now. Now is the time to remember the Lord, the creator. Hallelujah. In these days, this is the time. Tell your neighbor, this is the time. Tell yourself, this is the time. It is your time to remember your creator in the days of your youth. Because if you don't remember him now, the corresponding force, capacity you need for the future, you may like it. Why? Why the evil days come not? No, the years draw nigh. When thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Hallelujah. When we started this fellowship, I told you we will do seven things. Number one, I'll make you teach you to be strong. Hallelujah. Number two, I'll ensure you become a force to be reckoned with. Hallelujah. Number three, you become a success and you'll be beautified, amen. An example of beautification. Number four, we will learn how to be sold out to Jesus and the things of God to become a priority. Number five, we shall end up being pay setters and a game in our fields of expertise or training. Number six, how to become a successful protege and a proper son and daughter in the ministry. And lastly, number seven, how to make the word of God profit from you. Hallelujah. In honor of Christ Jesus. The second session when we were here, we named this meeting, we called it Keys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We called it what? Keys. We said we shall be known as kingdom enlightened youths. According to the book of Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, the Bible says, and I'll give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and so thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and so thou shalt lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. We shall be binding and losing in the name of Jesus Christ. With that understanding, I want you to know you can take over anywhere. Hallelujah. You can go anywhere and take over. You can go anywhere and become the best in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray in the name of Jesus, may God reveal to you the keys that you need for you to move forward in the name of Jesus Christ. I stand against any form of limitation in your life and I declare you're not limited in the name of Jesus Christ. Any opinion that is not built from the word of God will not have a right over your life, will not stand over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare, may you become what God destined you to be in the name of Jesus Christ. So today we start on our series, how to be strong. How to be what? Strong. And I pray in the name of Jesus, before we finish this series, all of us shall be strong in the name of Jesus Christ. Shout aloud, amen, wherever you are. Amen. Hallelujah. You should be vibrant. Hallelujah. You are the ones who know, should know how to scream. If you don't know how to scream, I, people we think we're in the mortuary. Oh, yeah. Can we shout aloud, hallelujah? Yes, amen. 
When we say shout aloud hallelujah, you wave to Jesus. You don't put your hands down and look at me as an elder. Amen. Shout aloud hallelujah. Uh, yes, you wave your hands. Amen. That's what you do. Only have a good job. I think you're learning well. Eh? Joyce, if your partner is not shouting aloud hallelujah, you pull her hair. Amen. She will cooperate very well in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. Daniel 11, 32. Amen. And as such do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. Amen. By what? Flatteries. But, 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 but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do war. Expert. No one will corrupt you in the name of Jesus Christ. No one will corrupt you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Any form of corruption that was sown in your life shall not see the light of day in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone who said you shall not make it, you shall make it. Anyone said you are not strong, you shall be strong. Anyone said you are limited, you shall never be limited in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? The people who know they are God, they are God, shall be strong and do it. What does the word strong mean? According to my own definition. What does the word strong mean? It's simple. It's having a mark of great physical power, morality, intellectual capacity, and resources. Hallelujah. When you have all these things, you're strong. Let me repeat again. Having a mark, a mark, it is evidence. Everyone can see it in your life. Being strong, having a mark of great physical power. Great physical power, morality, intellectual capacity, amen? And lastly, resources. No one shall ever call you poor in the name of Jesus Christ. When they see you, they shall say you are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. You become the brilliant one in your level in the name of Jesus Christ. You become a go-to, the center of consultation of what is correct and what is wrong in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray you shall reach a level your lecturers will consult with you also in the name of Jesus Christ. May you become a definition of knowledge in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So being strong is having the mark. You have the physical power. Whatever it takes you to do, you have the capacity. Hallelujah. You have the morality, your morals. Shows how strong you are. Joseph being exposed by Potiphar. Potiphar said, Jose, Jose, I'm available. Can you see me? Hallelujah. But Jose said, Potiphar's wife. Hallelujah. I have no time. Let me run for myself. That is morality. Amen. Capacity to withdraw when there's need of the devil opening a door for you. And the Bible says, flee every youth, every appearance of the devil. You need morality. When they tell you to steal and you have consciousness, you cannot take from anyone. Amen. Because temptation will come. A young girl will come and strip before you. Young man, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will baptize yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean. By the time you come back, man of God, the baptism was very heavy. I could not even recover. I say, huh, my friend, you need deliverance. Why? You lack morality. Younger, a young man will confuse you with language, with cologne, with words, with music, with money. Yeah? You crash your life at a tender age because you lack morality. Amen. Intellectual capacity. I've talked about it. Men full of skill of learning, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. According to the book of Daniel chapter 1, God gave them the skill of learning you know your intelligence shall be the best in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your memory. You shall not forget anything you read in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything you read, you shall consume it consumable. You know what I'm about? You will not forget it. Amen? And I've talked about having resources. When you are strong, you have money in your pocket. You are not fullizering or pullizering, whatever it is you're doing. You know what I'm about? Huh? You don't do those things. Eh? We don't occur 
and Jahazi the Okoa. You don't do that. If you borrow credit for 100 shillings and you pay Safaricom, they give you 90 bob. Is, is that not poverty? Yeah? They are not giving you exactly whatever you need. Yeah? You need resources. It's not, you are not too young to start making money. Understand what about? At your age, may most of you buy properties in the name of Jesus Christ. May most of you build houses in the name of Jesus Christ. May you start your own entrepreneurship in the name of Jesus Christ. May you start giving tithes and offerings in checks, not in cash, in the name of Jesus Christ. It is possible. That's the beginning of strength. Having a mark. Say, I have the mark of physical power. Say, I have the mark of morality. I have the mark of intellectual capacity. And I have the mark of resources. Amen and amen. So from the above scripture, it means if you know your Lord, your God, you'll be strong physically. Hallelujah. The Lord will build you like Samson. You'll be strong morally. The Lord will make you like Joseph. You'll be strong intellectually. The Lord will give you wisdom as Solomon and you'll be blessed resource-wise. Hallelujah. Like Boaz, a man full of wealth. Hallelujah. He was a mighty man in wealth. Hey, as Ruth chapter 2, verse 1 says so. Hallelujah. He was a mighty man in wealth. May God make you mighty in wealth in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you know there's a blessing that God blesses you until you become the real definition of blessing? If there's someone asks you, what is blessing? They say, look at Jumbo. What is blessing? Look at Joyce. What is blessing? Look at Snyder. What is blessing? Look at another. You are the definition of blessing. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. They don't need to look at an English dictionary. Amen. That is, means you are strong. In your school, they come to you as if you're at the bank. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. We know you have the wisdom. You have the capacity. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the time to be strong and start being strong is in your youthful years. Is in where? Your youthful years. So if you don't take care of your youthful years right now, you'll mess it up. Hmm? After dancing happy birthday, and then what happens? Happy birthday. I'm not seeing my daughter singing that song in her school. Eh? To you. Then after that, what happens? Eh? What happens? After listening to all these guys, what happens? Then what happens? You have, that's the only thing you've done is to sweat. But there's no impact of strength. People don't recognize your skill of dancing. People recognize the skill of your resources. People do not recognize the skill of dancing. They check on your morality. They check on your intellectual capacity. Even if you're a good athlete and you come and tell us, I go, I went, and I came. What have you said? You need God to bless you with strength. So if you go, you went and you came. We do not understand anything you say there. So may God give you strength mentally. Hallelujah. That's what makes our youth relevant. Hmm? Hallelujah. So how do you start being strong? And that's what I'll be talking about today. How do you start being strong? How do you start being strong? Then uh, from there, I'll start teaching you how to be strong physically, how to be strong morally, how to be strong intellectually, amen. And how to be strong is resource-wise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But today we look at how do you start being strong? <laughs> you don't start being strong by telling people you're strong. People who are strong don't even tell you they're strong because they know they're strong. Amen. But it's how you start being strong. Number one, you start being strong when you have someone who speaks to you. When you have someone who does what? Speaks to you. And Solomon speaking to us in the book of Proverbs says, my son, listen. Hallelujah. Attend. Hallelujah. If you have no one who speaks to you, your strength will be weak. That's the truth. Ask yourself who speaks to me. Tell yourself, ask yourself who speaks to me. 
Ask yourself, who corrects me? Who's my voice? Who's my voice? Who do I answer to? Ask yourself, who do I answer to? Most of us don't know who speaks to us. So we speak to ourselves. And most of the time we end up with wrong decisions that lessen our strength. You are as strong as the, as the amalgamation of wise words, hallelujah, of putting together wise words. The more wise words you have, it makes you stronger. Hallelujah. If you want to cook good food on a quick basis, you need to put more fire on it. Hallelujah. But if you put less fire, it will take you years to cook. Is it true? So who speaks to you? Who do you answer to? Who corrects you? Who can tell you to stand up and don't win to say why? You stand up. Who can tell you sit down and don't say why? Who speaks to you? And the challenge of the youth, they have no one to speak to. Or they have no one who speaks to them. The book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. 1 John 2, 14. Who speaks to you? The one who speaks to you determines how strong you are. And God talking to Joshua in the book of Joshua chapter 1. He says, be strong and courageous. God was speaking to most Joshua because he was a youth. If you have no one to speak to you, you cannot be strong and courageous. You will make money and eat it all of it. Then when you are that, you say, man of God, deliverance. I need deliverance. I don't know where my ears went to. There's no deliverance. You are lack someone to speak to you. Amen. First John 2, 14. I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are what? Strong. I speak to you because you are strong. Hallelujah. Who speaks to you matters. And the word of God abideth in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. Hallelujah. May you overcome every wickedness in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Every wicked temptation, may you overcome it in the name of Jesus Christ. Every wrong relationship you are in that is not adding value to you, may God give you the strength to overcome it in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of us as a youth, if you have no one to speak to, you don't know how to say no. You know very well that thing is not working, but you cannot say no. Oh yeah, what will happen if I tell him no? Nothing will happen before even you arrive, he was this, or she was. You need someone to speak to you. Who speaks to you? When someone speaks to you, it's like they're charging you. You see, they charge your phone. We cannot only speak to ourselves. As young as you are, ask yourself, who speaks to you? Your friends can never speak to you because some of them cannot correct you. If you even wear a wrong dress, they will lie to you. Oh, you look beautiful. But you know very well your legs are not matching well. But you're just, ah, hey, thank you, I love you. But you meet a father like me, I'll tell you, my friend, go change that thing. You look like Dexter on yeah? the laboratory. Amen. And there's nothing you will do because I speak to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You have imagined Dexter by himself? That's the truth. Because you have no one to speak to you. That's why you're committing problems for your life. Amen. Some of us are place and make us that we look like rainbow. We don't know which color you are. Even if we're supposed to find your locality, we don't find it. It's only your ID can save us. How do you combine three colors in your face, then add another funny color on your clothes? Even you're competing with Christmas tree. If you have no one to speak to you, you may think you're in fashion. You're not in fashion. You need someone to speak to you. Hallelujah. Who speaks to you? Am I saying the truth? Now, if someone speaks to you, you can overcome the wicked one. You can overcome what? The wicked one. Because the wicked is there. The young person is fighting for attention. The young person is fighting for opportunities. But who speaks to you? Who do you answer to? Hallelujah. Number two, how do you start being strong? By developing your faith through the hearing and hearing by the word of God. The hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's how you develop your faith. Develop your, you gain strength. By hearing and hearing by. That's why every youth meeting cannot lack the word of God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 34. 
Some of us, we meet people only speak doubt to us. Oh, your problem is your family is too much. Hey, I pity you. Hey, God will just help you. No! God already gave you a solution. Amen. You need someone to tell you you can make it. You can do it. All things are possible through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. There's nothing impossible. You can do all things through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. What do you mean, my friend? Your hair cannot grow. We just leave it to Jesus. No. Eh? You need someone to tell you there's possibility. Someone to speak faith in you. Most young men are in depression because they lack someone to speak faith in them. They don't have, a, they have not had someone who can develop their faith. Like now, what am I doing? I'm developing your faith by the hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews 11, 34. The Bible says, quench the violence of fire, escape the age of the sword. Out of weakness, we were made strong. By what? By faith. By the word of faith we had. Hallelujah. Whilst valiant in fight, turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Hallelujah. Wow. You are not turning about from any person who has been mocking you. You shall become a success. Anyone who's talking you, they will see that God has done you well in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone who's telling you are wasting your time serving God, they shall have an evidence that you are not wasting time in the name of Jesus Christ. God will give you a mark. God will distinguish you in the name of Jesus Christ. For this decision, don't feel out of place. You need to develop your faith for you to be strong. Develop what? Your faith. Romans chapter 4, verse 20. Romans 4, 20. Romans chapter 4, verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Having no evidence, but having the evidence of faith. It doesn't matter where you're born, how your background is, what your family has gone through. God will distinguish you in the name of Jesus Christ. Where your parents have reached, where your parents have reached is the least place you will ever be in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will give you a higher mark in the name of Jesus. You will move from glory to glory. Your past shall shine brighter and brighter in the name of Jesus Christ. Being strong in faith, giving glory to God. Delay is not denial. You understand? Every challenge creates an opportunity. Amen? Every visible battle has its only invisible solution. I pray may God show you a solution in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May God give you your own solution in the name of Jesus. But how? By faith. By faith. By faith. What is faith? Assurance of things so forth. Yet I'm not seeing it. Can you say I'm a millionaire? Say I am a billionaire. Oh, say I will drive a Tesla. I will drive a Chrysler. I will buy a driver Maybach. I will have a helicopter. Hey! I will be wearing a Gucci, Lotons, hallelujah. The Lord will bless me. Yes. I will be going to Italy just to wear suits, get handbags, Singapore, just to have good shoes, hallelujah. You are not a local champion. Locality, you left it the moment you accepted Christ as your Lord and personal savior. Why? Because he said you shall be witnesses to me, not only here, but to the uttermost part of the world, hallelujah. The outermost part of the world belongs to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He staggered not at the promises of God. Now, you see, you only know the promises of God by hearing and hearing the word of God. If I keep on telling the word of God, you will know what God has promised you. May you see what God has promised you in the name of Jesus Christ. May you see it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you saying Amen. Or you're looking at me. Amen. You shout, amen says, let it be. May you be a success in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Hallelujah. Arnold, good job. Arnold knows, amen. That's how you say, amen. Are you, are you taking coke? Oh yeah, in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. You lift up your hands and say, amen. Amen. I'm not a product from Coca-Cola. Hallelujah. I'm a man of God. Please receive the word by faith. Hallelujah. Receive the word. Amen. <laughs> he staggered not at the promises of God. You are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Those of us who are lifting our hands quarter away, are you praying for quarter blessings? 
Okay. It's up to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We act according to our faith. Hallelujah. Number three, how do we become strong? By knowing the truth of who God is. Some of us don't know who God is. We have an idea who God is. We have learned so much about the principles of Jesus and forgot the person of Jesus. That's why we don't know the who God is. If I was supposed to ask you of you who God is, some of you would tell me he's the father of Jesus. It's the truth. He's in heaven, the creator of the universe. But who is God? God is more than the creator of the universe. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. By knowing the truth of who God is, you must know the truth of who God is. That's how you become strong. How I'm so loud to my God is because I know who he is. Hallelujah. Hebrews 6, 18. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. Hallelujah. To, it is impossible. You know the meaning of impossible? It cannot happen. We might have a strong consolation who have fled the refuge of to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. When you know who God is, the truth, you will know God cannot lie for you. If God says he will heal you, he will be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. If God says he will bless you, you will be blessed. There is no way God will lie. But you don't always think God has lied because you don't know who God is. You will always think God has delayed because you don't know who God is. Hallelujah. Knowing the truth of who God is will influence your strength as a youth. Numbers 23, 19 says, For God is not a son of man to lie. Amen. But a son of man to repent. God cannot lie. Say, God cannot lie. Say, God cannot lie to me. Say, my, his promises are yea and forever. Amen. That is it. God cannot lie to you. He cannot lie. God said he will bless you, he will bless you. If God says he will change your life, he will change your life. If God says he will wipe away your tears, he will wipe away your tears. Please know that he cannot lie. When you know God cannot lie, you'll be strong. I'm always strong because I know my father cannot lie to me. He is not man that he will lie. You are not a man, no. You are not a man, I know. You are a God who opens doors no man can shut. You are not a man, you are not a man, no. You are the God of everything, no one like you. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you. No one like you. Is it? No one like you. Why? He cannot lie. 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 That's the truth that makes me strong. Hallelujah. My God cannot lie. Now, if you don't know who God is, you will think he has lied to you. That's why you result to men as your only way. But God is the way, the truth, and the life. May you see Jesus as your way, the truth, and the life in Jesus' name. Number four, how will you be strong? Through developing yourself to become of age. Through what? Developing yourself. Some of us, we have not developed. We are underdeveloped. We have many years, but underdeveloped. Truth be told. You are 25, you are acting as if you are 15. Grow up. You are underdeveloped. Years has just come by, but you have cognitive development in the brain is not there. You cannot be strong beyond your development. Do you understand about how you develop yourself influences your, how you strong you become. Some of you, just seeing a rabbit, you start crying. It will eat me. You are not developed. Why should a rabbit eat you? What have you done to it? Eh? You saw a cockroach. You're on top of every chair. 
Jesus, I bind the devil in this house in the form of cockroach. Who told you the devil took the cockroach? You are underdeveloped. Some of you cannot solve problems at your age. You're still calling your mother. Mommy, sukari meisha, nitafanya nini? You are underdeveloped. You have years, but you're not developed. Through developing yourself, you become of age. Develop yourself. And you need someone to develop you. You need exposure to be. Some of us are not exposed, truth to be told. We are not exposed. That's why a young man will buy you mtura and you fall in love. Smoky. Yes. Buy you chocolate. You say, oh my God. He, he just bought me chocolate, Cadbury chocolate. Hey, but that you don't understand. This man took care of me. I felt heaven on earth. Where were we? We were in hell. We were also in heaven on earth, my friend. Amen? This is also a form of heaven. The truth be told, because you are underdeveloped, yet you have years. How can a young girl fall in love because of chips? Chips and chicken. Chips and chicken. You have years. Even you have hair in your, in your knees, yet you are falling in love for chips and chicken. What's the problem? You are underdeveloped. You have age, but not development. A young man cannot even wake up and fix things. He's waiting. He's behaving, still behaving as if he's 11 years old. He will wear the same socks. He will never polish his shoe. Hmm? He will only go to the barber when you remind him. You're supposed to be, oh, thank you for reminding me. Whose head was it? So it's your own head. You, are, you have age, no development. You are dating a girl. You don't even know how to talk to the girl. Yeah? You don't know how to befriend the girl. You have to say, man of God, I want to marry. How will you marry and you have age and you're underdeveloped? It's the truth. That's why some men have been praying for prayer points. Lord, send me an angelic woman. Yet they're not angelic. Amen. Young man, you're sulking. You want diapers to talk. Yeah? So the young girl must come with diapers in their house. Sorry, sorry, boo-boo. I didn't mean to hurt you. I was saying to tell you the truth. I said, hmm, you see, you see, I thank God for you. Hey, grow up. You are underdeveloped, but you have age. Have you not met people who are 30 years old, are behaving like 15 years old? And there are many youth who are like that. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. You must develop yourself. Develop yourself. If you don't have PD, personal development in your life, you'll be limited on how far you can go. You must develop yourself. Develop, develop yourself. You must develop. If you don't develop yourself, you'll be pregnant at a younger age and the man will run away. You'll fall in love for funny little things that do not even make sense. Oh, I love him, daddy. Why? Because he can sing. Is he the first singer in this world? Look for better things to tell me about. Yeah. Kwani is the only one who has voice. Before he started singing, others were singing. Daddy, I love him. Why? He has a big chest. Ah. Mm. How do you know if he has one box inside the stomach? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Telling me he has a big chest. Young man. Hey, daddy has a long hair. Mm. Even hair can fall, my friend. You need development. Some of us, even the basis of our love does not give instruction. Yeah. Why do you, why, we fall in love funny things? Young man, you're falling for love, for in love with a girl because of the ass. Say that if you see her butt, hey, this is everything. This is the latest number plate in the streets. That's not the basis of foundation. You, you are underdeveloped. Have you seen our best? Yeah? This is the true Times Tower in the city of the town. No! That is underdevelopment. Truth. I'm just telling the truth. You are thinking they're still like a child. There are better things to fall for. Tell your neighbor and tell yourself the higher places to go for. You're falling in love for something small. Hmm? 
the man brings for you home every end of the weekend, they fall in love because he buys you detergents. See your life. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. Hallelujah. Hebrews 5, 14. But strong meat belonging to them that are full of age. Strong meat. You must grow of age. Develop yourself. Stop acting like a child. And with your ears, you're acting like a child. You're in charge. They need to tell you, move that chair. You can see it with your head. It means you have age, but no development. Hallelujah. It says, be strong, but strong meat belonging to them that are full of age. Even those who, by reason, use, have their senses exercised to discern both and good. Their senses have been what? Exercised. Some of us have senses, but we have not exercised it. We cannot tell when you're being fooled and when you're being told something that is true. Check around yourself. Most of us have done this wrong mistake because of poor development of our senses. You are dating a young man who is borrowing from you and you're just supporting him. Are you the finance marketing director? of his life. You are under developer. Say, ah, you know, I love him. One day, God will rescue him. Are you the Holy Spirit? You are underdeveloped. You have age. And you, are not, you have not exercised your senses. May God give you grace to develop yourself quickly in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Number five, by choice. By what? You choose to be strong. Some of us cry for anything. Everything and anything we cry. So what do you want me to do? Okay, if you ask me what you want me to do, what do you want me to do also? Make a choice. That's what, what do you want me to do? Do something. No, we'll do it for you. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6.10. By choice. Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren. Finally. Make a choice. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong. You choose to be strong. Hallelujah. Choose to be strong. First Corinthians 16, 13. First Corinthians 16, 13. First Corinthians 16, 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Hallelujah. Don't act as if you cannot make it. Some of us just walking will make you cry. Just walking. So, so what happened to the Matatu they have strict today? This is not fair. The government should look into these things. The Matatu driver was not sensitive. If you check the Matatu driver just passed your stage by 100 meters. Only 100 meters. You say you're crying. 100 meters. You are crying. Your choices are wrong. Choose to be strong. Hallelujah. Say, I choose to be strong. Yes. Choose to be strong. Choose to be strong. Men who run away from their responsibilities because of weakness. I'm hearing many cases of young men making girls pregnant. And when the pregnancy comes, they run away. So I'm wondering when you made the girl pregnant. So you are there. You are an active participator. Why are you running away now? Being a, be an active supporter also now. Choices. Be strong. Be strong. Choose to be strong. Hallelujah. Something has gone wrong in your family. Don't break down. Choose to be strong and support the family. Be there for your mother. Be there for your father. Hallelujah. Generally, even me, I don't love weak people around me. I don't love weak people around me because it's trouble for you. They will start crying for anything. Oh, man of God, now see what is happening. We need to kneel down and pray. My friend, there's some things you don't pray. You cast the devil out. Hallelujah. What are you praying for? Choose to be strong. Number five. Sorry, number six. Subscribe to a relationship with Jesus. Subscribe to a relationship with Jesus. Acts chapter 3, verse 16. Acts 3, 16. And his name through faith, in his name hath made me strong. 
whom you see now, yea, the faith which is in him had given him this perfect soundness in his presence. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. We are talking about the man at the beautiful gate. And the Peter told them, Silver and gold I have now, but as such as I have, I give unto thee. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you are lying to yourself. That relationship you are in, that's not be founded by Christ. I'm telling the truth. It may not end up the way you're expecting. If Jesus is not at the center, remember there's nothing that's holding you together. The truth be told, because what are you holding together on? Yes. Most of us, that's why we got married to wrong people. Now we are regretting. Some of us are wrong. The wrong people, because they were lying, they were doing puppy love. I don't know if it is cat love, kitten love. Is that kitten love? You should look for one. That's not serious. Because Jesus is not as we are telling you, know your God, serve God, find Jesus. You're just taking us a joke. Because of one young man, you think you're so in love with him. Wait till the day he turns from being black to be brown and being brown to be black. You will know. You will know that all things are not gold if Jesus is not in between. Subscribe to a relationship with Jesus Christ. If Jesus is at the center of anything you're doing, do you know you'll be strong? Imagine Jesus being at the center of your relationship. You will not fear losing the man. You will know God will rebuild him. I'm talking about. You will not fear of being pregnant because you know you cannot be pregnant. You will not be engaging in sexual activities. There'll be no masturbation. Why? Jesus is the center. There'll be no pornography. Why? Jesus is at the center. No one is smoking bang, eating mirror, whatever it is, using cocaine. Why? Jesus is at the center. Most of us are sustaining our relationship by sex, nothing else. If we remove sex, if God takes away your genitals, what will you be doing in that relationship? I'm asking the question. Will you continue? If Christ today wakes up in the morning and tells you, I'm removing this one for one week, let us see if you survive. Do you think a relationship will survive? Jesus should be at the center of everything. Hallelujah. Let Jesus be at the center. Subscribe to a relationship with Jesus Christ. It will keep you strong in the name of Jesus Christ. And lastly, understand the things of the Spirit. Understand what? The things of the Spirit. These things of the Spirit, you can only learn it from a man. Hallelujah. There are forces that are fighting you that you cannot see. You need a man who has gone ahead of you. That's why I say Christianity is not a waste of time. How are you going to church? Why are you serving a man of God? Yeah? So you can read the Bible at home. You can stream. Okay. Let us read the book of Luke chapter 11, verse 21, 22. We see if you can stream in the, in the house with this man of things. Luke chapter 11, verse 21, 22. <laughs> Amen. If you don't understand the things of the Spirit, reading the Bible does not make you understand the things of the Spirit. Are we clear? That one takes you to a relationship with God. You need to reach a place where you see the things of the Spirit. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are spiritual through God. We are pulling down of strongholds. We are casting down every imagination in the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 11, verse 21. To 22. When a strong man armed keeps his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him his armor, wherein he trusted and divided his spoils. Do you hear that? So there are strong men acting in your lives without you knowing. How do you earn money and you don't know where the money went to? You got 20,000. After one week, you are broke. Hey, did your money work? Did he pack his things and left at night? He told you I've retired. Eh? What took the money? When is the day that you get to bless? That's the day you have family problems. You need to understand spiritual organizations for you to deal with spiritual matters because some root of our poverty, of our struggle are more spiritual than physical. 
Some roots of addictions and delays are more spiritual than physical. When a spiritual being is involved, even if you make the right decision, you will not make it. Did you hear what I say? Even if you turn to your right, the spirit will make you turn on the left. Ask the wife of Lot. It was a spiritual stronghold that he had in Sodom and Gomorrah. When God told them not to look back, she just needed to look back. But Lord did not have that spiritual stronghold. That's why she was able to, he was able to move forward. Some of us are under spiritual strongholds without us knowing. You have anger issues. It's a spiritual issue. You don't know why you get angry. You get angry until you boil. People see vapor. Have you ever seen cartoons? They, they move those things in the ears like, like a horn of a train. You look like that. Anger issues. Some of you can abuse people until people believe they are locked. Like hey, am I am I acting like a donkey? Hey, it's a spiritual thing. The man can wrap abuses until you wonder, do they have a CD of abuses? Are they abuse mixer? Hey. Some of us have the spiritual part that makes you poor. You love food. Food! You and food, you cannot be separated. Till heaven do your part. Hey. <laughs> hey. You can finish a whole box of pizza large and feel nothing and just say, I've started. Say, you've started? Say, yes. That was an appetizer. Hey. It's true. Some of us are spiritual long as sleep. We sleep and don't care. We are sleeping. Even if you are late for lectures or late to go in somewhere, they will understand. How will they understand when you're late? I don't know if you understand. Some of us are spiritual bag of delay. Even if you wake up early going somewhere, you will not arrive on time. You wonder why. And I woke up early on time. There's just a spirit that causes delay. You need understanding of spiritual matters. Hallelujah. Now, if you understand spiritual matters, you subscribe with the relationship with Jesus Christ. You make a choice. Hallelujah. You develop yourself and become of age. You know the truth of who God is. And then develop your faith. Then you have someone to speak to you. That's how you start being strong in the name of Jesus Christ. May you be strong in the name of Jesus Christ. Have you been blessed? So next time I start teaching you, how do you become strong physically? Amen. Because some of us are soft. Young man, you are so tired, you are lazy. You sleep and snore and collect everything. How do you become a husband in a house and you are lazy like that? Where are you going? Young lady, you are so lazy. Until bathing with this cold, you need encouragement from your fellow sisters. You, you, quit, you know how to eat, but you can't wash utensils. Oh yeah, we need to talk about that now. Is it true? Being physical. Being physically strong. Hallelujah. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Have you been blessed today night? Have you learned something? I'll give only three minutes for anyone who has any question before we pray. I'm always told to question and answer today and to see if I have any question that I can answer. Uh, Anyone with any question? Or all of you are touching your beards and your faces. I say, hey, man of God. Hey. Hey. Hallelujah. Or oh, the word was so straight enough that until you have no question. Anyone with any question? Two minutes to go. Uh -huh. So you all of you have understood the word of God? Okay, you can ask any question apart from that. Any other question? Bishop, my prophetess Joyce, you have any question? Do you have a download from heaven? No, not really. Ah, hallelujah. So I've spoken the mind of God 100%. No, when a prophetess confirms it, there's nothing more you can do. What you just do, tell people now, lift up your voice, thank God for the session. Say, Lord, give me grace 
to be strong in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and talk to Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, give me grace. Give me grace to be strong, Lord. Give me grace to be strong. Oh, God, let me be able, Lord God of heaven, to know, Lord, how to be strong in the name of Jesus. I shall not be a weakling. In the name of Jesus Christ, I shall be a strong youth, a youth vibrant in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, give me grace to be strong. Give me grace to be strong in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. I pray for all of you, may you be blessed in the name of Jesus. May the Lord cause you to see good things. May the Lord cause you to go far and wide. May the Lord make you see good, taste good in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for strength. Anyone who's feeling weight in their body, they're getting tired, I lift up that body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to you as a man of God. I speak to your body and I declare you are free from that embargo in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just to reiterate, tomorrow our Sunday service comes live from 9 on second service from 11 o'clock. Then we also we have a circle training. I'll have a guest speaker speaking to you tomorrow from 1.15. Please don't miss for all of us who are doing the circle so you can understand about financial principles. If you have a date, you can cancel it. They will survive. They will not die. Hallelujah. The Lord will be on your strength in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, listen to me. Even if you go to date you and you're poor, you'll be at the mercy of the one who dated you. It's better to have your own money. Amen. If they cough, you can cough better. You know what I mean. Hallelujah. That is better. So please attend the circle training by the grace of God. Hallelujah. And please come with someone. Tell your neighbor, look at someone. Tell them, come with someone tomorrow. Well, don't come by yourself. Carry someone. Carry someone. Carry someone. Hallelujah. Come with someone. God will bless you. Before we go, has my daughter done very well today with the church, Marianne? Can you put hands together for Jesus for her? Hallelujah. Amen. I think it is the hairstyle. Uh, I don't know. It is the hairstyle. Maybe she she knew today it was grooming. Marianne, good job. I'm proud of you. Always working extra hard in the name of Jesus Christ. Arnold did very well also with the introduction. And I bless God for his seriousness. Hallelujah. Let us all of us try to be serious like him. You see, though he's serious. Look at him. You see how serious he is. If all of us can be serious like him, we can, be, we can go far in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And may the grace of our Lord be with us now forevermore. Amen. I love you all. And Jesus Christ is Lord. See you next time.